This is a follow-up video to the video that I recorded two days ago and uh, some of y'all complained about the, uh, the, the wind that was blow that seemed to be blowing in that in that video uh, and the truth is I had the uh, camera phone too close to the AC in the car and that was why it was making such a loud blowing noise. Now I was always audible in that video <clears throat> but I was a little annoyed uh, by the fact that, that uh, of my oversight. Now um, I'm in a room which has a fan blowing but I tested the, uh, the levels a moment ago and it seemed that uh, the, the fan wasn't really uh, intruding too much upon my uh, mellifluous speaking voice. So I just wanted to follow up. I'm not going to repeat exactly what I said in that earlier video about the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir uh, and their extremely ill-chosen song in which they, they sang, We're Coming for Your Children, and then claimed it was all satirical. Um, but I do want to speak a bit more uh, about the context of it all, uh, and this is something I alluded to in that other video, but I want to hone in a bit more on this, this aspect of the story. Um, and I say this honestly without malice for anyone of any orientation. Um, this isn't about uh, attacking or going, going at uh, or uh, being, being mean or, or unfair to anyone <coughs> uh, who happens to be attracted to um, to something <laughs> out of the ordinary, I don't know. Um, but it is to say that we have to see these things in, con in context. Okay, now, if you are a student of history, you will know that uh, the gay movement, particularly the, as pertains to gay men, not so much uh, with lesbians, but the, but the gay male uh, movement, and that does not include everyone who has the, the, uh, the orientation or whatever you want to call it, but the, the movement, the political movement, um, over the last few decades, uh, for a long period of time, it was not a not just a fringe element. It was it was a major aspect of the the political gay movement that uh, they were uh, that they welcomed or believed that uh, one should be tolerant of pederasty. This is not me making this up. This is not me being homophobic. This is uh, me being, again, a student of history. And if you went back 30 years, 40 years to the, you know, to the 60s, 70s, even into the 80s, uh, when AIDS started up, um, and put a damper on things slightly, um, you will find that uh, lowering the age of consent was a major plank amongst political homosexuality um, and uh, tolerance for pederasty oh, was a major plank uh, among political homosexuality political male homosexuality um, and this would be a point of pride for a lot of the, the a lot of those involved you know several decades ago now they want to whitewash it. Now they want to uh, pretend that it, that that was never the case, or uh, they, they don't they don't want your attention to be drawn to it because you might become a bad thinker if you become aware of those those kinds of things. But here is the thing, you know. Yesterday I talked about Allen Ginsberg and the the uh, uh, argument he got into uh, with Norman Podhoretz as recorded in Norman, Norman Podhoretz's uh, collection of essays entitled Ex-Friends, where he uh, 
went from being a, a Jewish liberal to being a Jewish neocon uh, and and had a falling out with all of his uh, former uh, former comrades on the left and one of them was the poet Allen Ginsberg Allen Ginsberg who was a member of NAMBLA the North American Man Boy Love Association and who uh, proudly liked uh, adolescent boys, saw them in a sexual manner. Again, from his perspective and from the perspective of Nambla, um, this, was, this was not about abuse, it was about love. They loved boys. Of course, to us, to what I believe to be any sensible, reasonable person, that's uh, just nonsense uh, and specious nonsense and, uh, uh, and nonsense to be absolutely positively uh, rejected uh, as a, a scurrilous lie. But there is a history of it. Uh, you know, this, this kind of thing goes back centuries. And uh, Ginsburg was a part of this entire tradition. So Ginsburg, uh, it, according to Podhoretz, in, in the final, uh, as they were feuding, uh, before Ginsburg walked away uh, in, in anger, he, uh, he said something very vindictive and something very frightening to Podhoretz, which, which is, he said, he said to him, we'll get to you through your children. And I don't think you can give Ginsburg the benefit of the doubt there and say, oh, well, what he, what he, what he meant by that was what the, now the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir is claiming they mean in this song that they're they're just when they say they're coming for your children they're just they just mean they're they're going to uh, uh, make your children be more tolerant uh, and so it doesn't mean that they they are they're coming for your children to molest them well uh, again the we're coming for your children. Sounds an awful lot like we'll get we'll get to you through your children, and as far as I know, someone like Allen Ginsberg has not been canceled. Now somebody could tell me otherwise, if if uh, if I'm mistaken, but I have not heard anywhere uh, from anyone on the left that Allen Ginsberg. Uh, is canceled because he was a child molester, because he preached uh, pederasty, um, because he believed pederasty was love. And I, nor have I heard uh, that Harvey Milk, a uh, famous iconic gay activist, um, nor have I heard anywhere that Harvey Milk has been canceled, even though it's well known that he uh, molested a 15-year-old uh, teenage runaway. Um, so, why has Harvey Milk not been canceled? Why have, why has uh, Allen Ginsberg and others like, like him not been canceled? You know, if the, if, uh, the gay men's, uh, the San Francisco gay men's choir wants credibility uh, and wants to show that they are being consistent, they ought to say we absolutely, absolutely eschew people like Allen Ginsberg, people like Harvey Milk. You know, uh, we they, they could say something like, "We we appreciate their accomplishments, but we cannot tolerate these uh, these um, deficiencies in their character that uh, led them to uh, to molest underage boys." Um, but the fact is, again, as I was saying before, in, if seen in historical context, this, uh, this, this entire aspect of political homosexuality is uh, one that runs quite deep. And I think they, they know that if they open that can of worms, uh, it's, uh, it's not going to be good for them. So instead, they try to have it both ways. They try to record. They they, they, they record the song that is inc incredibly vindictive, incredibly mean spirited, 
uh, you know, is is them getting off on, getting their jollies off of saying, oh, all of those, you know, rednecks and conservatives in middle America are going to hear us say we're coming for their children and they're going to freak out. Isn't that going to be great? And then afterwards, when their provocation uh, actually has the result of provoking people and people get angry with them and they start getting death threats and so forth, uh, then they, they, they try to retreat into this, oh, well, you know, we just meant it as satirical, you idiots. No, you didn't just mean it as satirical. Um, you were obviously, obviously uh, seeking to provoke, and the provocation, the provocative language you were using is one that you need to convince people. You know, if you want to say, we're not like that anymore, we don't stand for that anymore, you need to uh, show that that's, what, that, that, uh, that that's where you stand right now. Um, you know, just the same way somebody who's uh, pro South but but uh, isn't uh, but but isn't uh, pro slavery, you know, somebody like that, of course, has to say, or is is uh, it, would, it would be a good idea rhetorically for him to say uh, to make that clear um, that that he supports the South politically and culturally and. Uh, but uh, but of course eschews uh, and rejects the notion of uh, <clears throat> of chattel slavery. In the same sense, the uh, those uh, carrying on the torch of political homosexuality, um, <laughs> carrying on the torch, no no pun intended there. Um, they they've they've got the weight of this uh, this aspect of their movement historically speaking, um, and they need to acknowledge it and show that they're, that's not where they stand, that's not what they believe in anymore. And stunts like this, stunts like singing this song about coming for people's children, uh, that ain't going to do it. That ain't going to cut it. Not that, I, not that I'm advising them, not that I'm concerned trolling them. <laughs> um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, Take a bigger hole, guys. That's fine with me. Um, but I just wanted to make that observation, and hopefully you heard me a little better this time. Thanks for watching. My name's Andy Nowicki. Please check out my work at altrightnovelist.com, and uh, please look into uh, my latest book entitled The Insurrectionist, available from terrorhousepress.com.